All right, let's go ahead and call this um, Board of Commissioners of Douglas County Transportation Committee meeting of June 19, 2018 to order. Um, what I'd like to do is sort of acknowledge um, who's in the room. Uh, I'm the Vice Chairman and Chairman of the Transportation Committee. Um, Commissioner Mulcair of the 3rd District is absent today. To my right is uh, County Administrator Mark Till. We've got um, Director of Transportation Miguel Valentin. We've got um, Gary Watson, Director of Multimodal. We've got um, Mr. Roberts from, uh, Ron Roberts from our Planning and Zoning Director. Did I get that right? Or Manager? Manager. We'll call him that. Sorry, Mark. Um, we got Joe Bean, um, our Secretary of Transportation, to my left. We got a set of interns here, and also we have um, we have some other guests that will be here shortly. The collaborative firm to give an update, and I've got Director of Finance Jennifer Holman. I think I counted for everybody. Did I miss anybody? All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We want to acknowledge the public being here for this open meeting. This meeting is being filmed. Um, we recognize this meeting is going to be um, long, uh, but I'm, I'm going to keep it as tight as possible. Um, that session as well. It was right after this. So first order of business, um, Director Valentin, we've got approval of the meeting minutes. Yes, sir. It was the May 19th, uh, May 15th, 2018 uh, meeting minutes have been distributed and uh, we're ready for approval. For May 15th. May 15th. All right. All right. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at the meeting minutes? Okay, sir. Are there any objections? And they'll stand as presented. Okay. Next one. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, no, we had August. We had April 17th. April 17th, 2018 minutes. Okay, so can I get a motion to adopt the April 17th, 2018 meeting minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. All right. Let's keep it moving. All right, next one we did. Let's see. All right, so we've got to rework this. Um, I ask um, pleasure. To, to move our agenda around. Let's go do this. Yes. Since we've got some guests here, I'm going to try to get them out of the order. Ron, we're going to let you go. Can I, you guys okay? Let Ron sure. and Jennifer, mm -hmm. and then we'll get you guys out of here, and then we'll take care of the rest of it. Gary, you okay with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Ron. Okay. Well, I'm here today because uh, the Sweetwater Master Plan was completed last year. Um, and we have the opportunity now to uh, get Kimley Horn to update the Sweet Winter Master Plan so that it is LCI eligible. I know that uh, in documents in my office there was uh, some correspondence with, with Madam Chair to LCI back in October to uh, get the document retro um, as a retro approved as an LCI, which is a livable centers initiative. <coughs> And, uh, and I've had some discussion with, with Atlanta Regional um, staff on this topic and there are components that they want to see in the Sweetwater Master Plan. And so I went back to the original consultant, Kimley Horn, and they provided me with a, a set of five tasks and a timeline and an amount uh, for moving forward to actually Get these work elements in there. The timeline is going to be about three, four weeks. The, the activities surrounding it include a five-year transportation action plan, a five-year housing strategy, and other initiatives. Review and analysis of the comp plan, which is currently going, and a list of other programs, policies, activities. These are part of what they want to see in the actual Sweetwater Master Plan. Repeat those one more time. That that was expectations. Three. The five-year transportation action plan. Yep. The five-year housing strategy and other initiatives action plan. Yep. Review and analysis of the comprehensive plan. Yes. Zoning yes. and regulatory actions. Okay. And list of any other program policy or activity items, action items from the plan. Yep. Those are the uh, elements that we need. Um, they will review and update them since the Kimmel Horn was the initial drafter of this, and, and as a reminder to everyone, this was actually paid for through the economic development. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, it was funded through economic development and 
with just a little bit more, we can get this LCI. And the benefit of that is the transportation money that is available for LCIs in the future. I uh, just wanted to take a minute. You know, LCI program has funded 172 million in federal funding for transportation projects. And I just pulled this off because I wanted you to be aware of what uh, funding types are available. Uh, pedestrian facilities, 50%. Bike ped facilities, 17%. Operations and safety, 11%. Capacity reduction, 8%. Transit facilities, 8%. Side paths and trails, 5%. Bicycle facilities, 1%. That's a breakout of what the, some of the funding is, has been used for throughout the region. Uh, also want to add that 74% of the LCIs are actually found in Gwinnett, DeKalb, and Fulton counties. So. Two points on that information that you read, can you make sure that the committee has that access to that? Sure, sure. I just pulled this off the website, but yes. Yeah, so we can follow along. So, all right, let me, let me, I've got a couple questions, and you'll sure. help me through this. And, sure. All right, so when I first came in office back in 2009, I remember I, I um, one of the, um, I just defeated Charlie Camp, and on, on his desk, the very first thing I saw was this LCI for Fairburn Road. Mm -hmm. All right, and so Mark, this predates all of us, but Gary should not predate you to a certain extent. <coughs> so when it comes to the LCI, uh, we have one on Fairburn Road, um, uh, and we're beginning to work on that now. What, how long does it take for us, in, in other words, if we don't pursue this, if we can't fund the enhancements in there, or if we're able to leverage this grant, I mean, does it expire? Because the LCI, we haven't really taken a lot of advantage of the current LCI. We haven't. Yeah, so talk to me. Okay. Um, well, the fund is uh, an 80-20 match. Okay. So um, the, the federal funding is the 80 and the 20 is the, is the local funding. Um, there, this expiration, I'm not 100% sure of. I know that you know it's a designated LCI area, so activities in that, I don't think it, it, it expired, but I'll have to check on that. But I know from personal from personal experience, looking at the list of LCIs in DeKalb and Fulton and Cobb, that they were going back several years and applying for funding. So, um, right, so this is just an enhancement, right? It gives us opportunity. It does, and it typically will fund. It typically, if you from the list, it typically funds bike ped activities. It has to be on on county right away. Um, and I had some questions about some bike sharing activities. It doesn't do anything to help bring any kind of public in involvement in, um, but it does help with sidewalk construction, pedestrian activities, and the Sweetwater Master Plan actually has a component within it that has a, a roundabout. And then last year they recently funded a roundabout over at Emory University, so that could be something that could be considered as the plan becomes and here's, and don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. uh, my comment about back in 2009 when I first came in was that, I mean, the LCI was, it was great. I mean, that was the concept where I finally got the revelation that Douglas County is a bedroom community. It wanted to be like a little savannah and maintain the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. It has density, but at the same time, how, how, do, we, how do we creatively play in the community? Uh, so I'm not um, um, boxing. Um, I just wonder, how do we use it? Because um, it's been sitting there for a while. Now, I recognize coming in 09, we went through a recession. There's nothing that we could pursue by way of that. Um, there wasn't a lot of development. Um, builders were out of the business. Developers couldn't get funding. I get it. So let me ask you a question. What's the price tag that you're asking? $9,800. Maximum labor fee. $9,800 for the, to complete the five tasks. And Chairman, if, if I may, please. The, the, uh, the LCI doesn't expire as such. However, it is subject to update a certain components okay. uh, over time. Yeah. So um, once once the area <coughs> has been, once you meet the criteria for the area to be designated LCI, it has to be formally adopted and be part of the master plan, local That's uh, correct. master plan. And, and then once that is done, you can apply uh, periodically as the uh, uh, ARC will open up the uh, application process for funding for components that were identified as needed as part of the original stuff or an update to that. Is 
our consultants recommending this? Is this something that you're bringing me? We're, we're, what's spawning this? I'm curious why. This was a, I saw it was, it was, my predecessor had, had been working on it when I came in and I wanted to see if it, proved, it makes a lot of sense um, to go ahead and get these components in here and D D Director Valentin's correct. I mean, with, it would have to go back through, get approved as a plan and then it's an official LCI uh, once it's accepted by ARC. <coughs> And so that's the initiative. I think with the minimal investment, the maximum not to exceed the 9,800 um, could be, uh, it taps into a huge resource in the, that's for sidewalk. So 9,800 to complete the application for the LCI? It's to yes, to bring the Sweetwater Master Plan up to the level that ARC wants to see and add these different components. This the same firm is doing? The same firm that did it originally. Is the same firm they're doing the other study? Lee Road? Mm -hmm. No, sir, it's not the same firm. Clark Patterson Lee is doing Lee Road. No, sir, it's the first firm. Sorry, never mind. They're about to leverage this. So, it's the yeah. same, yeah, the same per, uh, firm that did the original Sweetwater Master Plan. I mean, I, I'd like to, I, I have no problem with this, I'm, but I'm sensitive it's in my district. I want to, I have no problem with the price tag, but I want to have the conversation with my broader, my peer group. Uh, Absolutely. I, I appreciate you doing this, Mark. Uh, I don't have an objection to to moving it forward. I don't know if I have. So, what are you asking for here? Let's let's back up. Are you just presenting it to us and just seeing what we want to say? Um, are you asking for a rep? What are you asking? Um, the ask here would be that uh, you know this is a, a economic development transportation opportunity. Um, I would I would see would see if this was uh, something we could use some SPLOS funding to complete and. Um, and probably get it on a, on a work session for discussion. So he's asking for a recommendation to move forward uh, with, with a contract to perform the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, I get transportation, maybe, which is, is tied to the, you know, that economic development bucket. Mm -hmm. I want to have this in a broader conversation with the board of commissioners. So this one right here, I don't want to make a record. Take no action mm -hmm. um, okay. for us. In other words, continue on administrative concurrence to go to the board of commissioners, but. Um, we're not making a recommendation because I think this boss is a broader, uh, a collective um, conversation. Mm -hmm. But you have no objections from me, Mark. I agree. Right. Okay. Gary. Yes. And Miguel. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So the action item is no action for us, but we do give you administrative concurrence to go to the board of commissioners to present this as is. Okay. All right. But I, I, I will say that I have no objections to the source being the SPLOST. Um, and specifically economic development. Okay. So, as a sort of, um, my director of finance is here, and I, um, he found out we could switch hats, but just uh, courteously, I don't think we can support going to the general fund to do this either at this point. Is that an accurate statement? That's, yes, that's accurate. Okay. All right. So, that's your only source. I so got you. We have agreed to the full board of commissioners. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. That's it. Anything else? That's all I have. All right. You can go where you can sit. I, I'm not going to stick around for this. Oh, that's fine. You, 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 no, no, no. You can. Okay, all right. That's fine. All right. Um, not a problem. All right. So take that off the list. We're moving around our agenda. So we're going to keep Thank flowing you. here. Thank you, Bob. You're done. Um, all right. So let's, um, let's talk about let's talk about the bus system. We're just going to call it what it is um, as it relates to the, the ARC. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we're going to talk about the, before we get deeper into that, I need, I need to cover some things. So, I need to get back to where she needs to get to her next meeting. So, uh, we're going to shuffle this around a little bit. And um, we, we had a third party operator, Todd and Gary, uh, on the table. Bill Peacock, our director of, of, of purchasing, could not be here. Mark, is that accurate? Today? That's correct. And he was supposed to give us a quick update on where we stood on that. So, Gary and Mark, can you just, before I get into us, can you tell us where we stand with that contract? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. I can. Back, back last spring, we put out a uh, request for qualifications uh, from third party operators. Uh, we received four proposals in, um, and at Madam Chair's uh, direction, we brought all, we invited all four uh, providers in to be interviewed. Um, one company declined to come in for interview. Three did. 
we uh, um, interviewed we interviewed two of them. One of them was, was late and it was a no-show, so we actually ended up interviewing two. Uh, from those two, uh, it was the selection uh, or the evaluation committee's uh, consensus that uh, it seemed that Commute Solutions out of Florida uh, would be the best fit for us. Um, we. Each, each one of us did an evaluation on the, uh, the proposals that we heard and uh, Commute Solutions appeared to be the best for us. As I recall, there was never any kind of official um, vote saying that we would negotiate um, with Commute Solutions, uh, but they, they were uh, our choice. And in, in the meantime, uh, I've had conversations on and off with Justin Rising of Commute Solutions. He's, he's been a very good uh, source of information for us as we've gone through this, this process. And he, he now is, is, if we're ready, uh, he's ready to talk to us. All right, so I, I appreciate that. That's, that's sufficient enough. And we'll get into more details about uh, that uh, at our next meeting. Um, and, and, and just for the record, let's, let's back up. Um, and, and Miguel, if you somewhat predates you, but it'll help in the holes. I'm, I'm sure you know, but I just want to say it for the record, that when, when back in 15, when we started all of this, we did our study and so forth, what we recognized and at the request of the current um, leadership was that um, it probably was not in the best interest of the county to pursue doing this themselves. In other words, that we just didn't have the capacity, um, we just didn't have the institutional knowledge, um, and that a third-party operator was a better play. All right, so we looked at that option. Um, so it's do-it-yourself, third-party operator. We also looked at a partnership with um, another municipality like Cobb, uh, with that uh, you know, so some type of MOU agreement. Um, the fourth option was MARTA. Right. In other words, it was. An, I, I I recall uh, when I first went to meet with MARTA. Our local delegation, our state senator, our state rep, the lobbyists, they all took me to meet uh, Keith Parker, which was the very, um, he was the CEO to turn Marvel around. And I, I got to go meet with him. The same day, unbeknownst to me, the prior chairman, um, Tom Worthen, and the entourage of people, Chris Pumphrey, um, Kelly Boatwright, all went to Washington. And they were up there talking about transportation. It was a funny, you know, in, in hindsight, when you look back on it, uh, we were traveling differently, but for different reasons. I share that to say is that when we looked, when we had the conversation, Marta, we weren't ready for Marta at that time, right? But it was more of a let's talk to the best. Let's talk to the best in the game. And let's get some insight and some intel of how this works. And so it was right after we went and um, um, this was when the study was complete, all right? So this is, um, had to be January of 16, um, that we're at, uh, we sat out and we shared with Marta. Um, you know, so what does it take? So this room table like this, Keith Parker down there, I'm in the corner. And while everybody else is talking, we're over here studying over your transportation services. Study. We're just sort of pouring over this thing and we're into the numbers and stuff. And he says, you know, the only commissioner that's ever come in here that actually knows the numbers, actually understands the maps and so forth. So we had a good conversation. And I mean, even looking at the technology, it's like, okay, we couldn't afford this from a general fund perspective. This is important. But we're not quite ready for this based on those terms in 16. So anyway, that was just learning that we had. And I remember there was a lot of conversation from you know my peers and so forth. why are you talking to Marta and just like well not that you could stop it but it was just more of a well why wouldn't you why wouldn't you benchmark why, why, why are you not I mean if we're down this path why aren't you giving intelligence now I know there was more to that story right it was just the ideal of or perhaps the threat of urbanization of, 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 of Douglas but that wasn't the point if we're down the path of a study and we're down the path of doing uh, doing an operation. I want to see C class, E class, S class, and A and G. And I want to know what did what did they bring to the table? If anybody has been educated in marketing, you understand. You want to know features, advantages, and benefits, All right? So we were bringing a level of analysis to the county. That says no, we need to know what we're signing up for. We're not blindly running out of this. It's not some type of political agenda. So we need to look at this, and we need to look at all partners, all options. Um, to close our eyes, to pretend like we weren't going to talk to anybody, as if like we, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was somewhat amateurish for, to me. You, you can't do that and be a leader. You gotta, 
you got to be about the people's business. And I guess from my perspective, District 2, they wouldn't expect anything less. All right? So we chose the path, uh, recognizing Cobb, ah, getting into an MOU right now, and it probably wasn't a good idea. Marta, I can't afford water I general funds, so that was often. This is me with the prior chairman. Like, Mr. Chairman, we can't do that. All right? Um, can we do it ourselves? Like, no. You guys were already busy doing what you're doing. You didn't have the capacity, so we knew we had to do a third-party operator, which brings us full circle. Um, and, and sometimes um, they, they have a collective understanding of, um, and Gary, tell me this, how many years was the firm that you guys picked? How many years were in the game and how many operations did they have? Do you know, roughly? Do you remember? Compared to some, they're, they're a smaller operation, but they, they have uh, numerous <laughs> contracts with communities uh, in Georgia, and in fact, they're just getting ready to, to, to implement a demand response program out in, in Carroll County. Uh, they're, they're well respected. They're highly involved in the Georgia Transit Association. And, and as I said before, they've given us a lot of free advice. And, and do the good. Um, one, one of the things, if you think about it, and I'm going to bring it full circle, um, which is, Gary, you were right, that there was no formal action taken. Um, the day that you guys were evaluating um, as a committee, uh, the people that came in to make the pitches, was the day I had my eye surgery. Yes, sir. All right. And so um, I, I've got um, obviously the third party operator. All your signatures are on it except for mine, uh, which of course in, until and, and I didn't sign it because of, and Mark, you're going to help me understand, you know, bring this conversation we had earlier. I didn't sign it because it wasn't time to obligate ourselves to a third party operator back in October. We just weren't there yet. So it's like, well, steady. It's not going to go anywhere. So we left it in committee. Uh, my, also, I had a concern, Mark, that if we signed it, and we hadn't got this hard, in other words, the funding hadn't been secured yet. Were we obligated in any kind of way to a three-year term, whatever that was, cost, fixed cost, sunk cost, um, retainer, consulting, I mean, can you answer that for us? Yeah, and then uh, based on previous comments on other contracts yeah. that, uh, that our county attorney has, and we would have it be a yearly contract up to three years, and um, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but more than I mean, we we always have a 30, 60, 90 day out, so either party can get out at any time. So, so no, we wouldn't be obligated for three years. But we'd be we would be obligated to whatever services they incurred during that period of time, even if it wasn't ramping us up. If there was an evaluation, if there was planning. Um, you know, normative consulting services, and again, you know what I'm trying to say. Yes, sir. Whatever's included in the contract, mm -hmm. we would with that. So, so there may be some throwaway. So, the, the goal was to be as close and aligned with the, the timing of the, the funding as possible, right? We didn't want to unnecessarily incur costs, but we know that there's probably some type of investment up front to get it ramped. Do you remember how long it would take them to ramp them from the time that we would say go, roughly, not the for obligation? Four to six months. To, to ramp fully up for a pilot to kick it off. So based on just where we are mid-year, we, we're all things being equal. We're probably first of 19. Something. First quarter of 19. Okay. The gap? Yes, sir. That's not about it's reasonable. Not about I mean, we're not setting any schedule here. We're just first things first. But we're just talking about. And the things that the operator would do, and I'm going to get to the, one of the things that they do is budgeting. And Jennifer, I'm coming to you in one hot second. Um, be, we're going to come to budgeting, but what else beyond budgeting would they do for us um, as a third party operator? Well, uh, initially they would come in and assist us in, in, in tweaking the routes. Um, this is what they do for a living. They operate bus systems, so they, they would look at our routes, they would tell us what works and what doesn't work if we need to make a right turn somewhere instead of a left turn if there's any way that we could shorten the routes and improve the headway, uh, things like that. They would, they would also, the way we envision things, they would be responsible for the drivers. They would do the recruiting of drivers, training the drivers, hiring the drivers, discipline the drivers, all of that. Um, and also, they would be, res in, in fixed route bus service, you're required to have an, an ADA paratransit component. Uh, they would also be operating that and they would be responsible for sitting at the call center uh, for the ADA service. Okay. So Jennifer, we, 
right? So that means they wouldn't be on our payroll. Correct. They would be a vendor. Correct. Yeah, the third party vendor. Third party vendor. So all we're doing is paying an invoice on a monthly basis based on some set. It's all included. Exactly. What, 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 so what about the actual vehicles themselves? Those are our vehicles or they lease them from no, us? We, or how does it work? No, we, 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 would, we would provide the vehicles. Um, our, our plan right now is also to provide all the, the uh, maintenance and repair on the vehicles and fuel. So, so we incur fuel and maintenance and operation. They provide personnel, they liability, everything, their benefits, they take care of scheduling all of that. Um, um, okay. Um, marketing, uh, communication, customer service, who falls on that? Uh, that would be, uh, service? That would be us, yes. Right, so they're just truly operating the bus. Anything logistic operationally to get it going. They're just Okay. Which brings me to my last point is that they also will be responsible for the ultimate budget. Is that accurate? For the operation, day-to-day -day operation of the bus service, yes. Sir. operations, okay. All right, which is, is some of the conversations, there's a, a distinguishing difference between what we estimated that, that would cost to operate this and, and their component of this is to operate the buses. Um, 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 obviously, we don't have a third-party operator on board. Um, they've given us some insight. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a consultant um, that's in the industry that helped us shape our budget. What was the number that we estimated inside our um, ARC application? The the fixed rate bus service itself was would be was about 1.6 million a year, and the ADA component of that would be about 375 thousand dollars. So overall, right, right at $2 million a year. $2 million a year. Okay. Director Holman, mm -hmm. so if we, with an assumption of $2 million a year, which I know we've, sort of, we've known this for quite some time, tell me what impact would that have on the digest, if at all, if we sort of plug that into our current model. We, and just for the record, guys, as you know, we brought a municipal advisor on board um, early this year, and they created a financial model that allows us to do some estimation. It's just a little, it's a tool, um, but with that, um, a modeling technique. Can you speak to that a little bit for the, maybe one, two, or three years? Yes. Um, we based it upon the two million that um, Gary was talking about, and then we also factored in the grant, which would be about a million and a half for three years. E a million and a half each year for three years. Um, we knew that there was going to be some, or we had, were told there were going to be some fair revenue um, for ridership. Um, and so for the first year, uh, it, we just put an estimate out there for, of $100,000. Um, the second year, um, $200,000. And then um, the third year and going forward would be $400,000. That was based on, I think, some information based on a study or some from the consultants, I believe, here. Um, so when you take the $2 million cost and you have the million and a half for the grant, and then say for the first year you have the hundred thousand for bus fares, that leaves about a four hundred thousand um, dollar possible impact to the general fund. Um, the second year, because we increased the fares from one hundred to two hundred, there'd be about three hundred thousand dollar impact to the general fund. And then years three going out with our years three would be um, a one hundred thousand, and then we would need to determine if. Uh, because I believe the CMAP, am I correct, is a three-year grant, we would need to then determine after the third year would we pursue other grant, uh, other grants out there because I don't believe we can get another CMAP for this particular thing. Correct. Right. Right. So thank you to that. And again, it's just a frame. And it, um, let's, let's be practical about um, the likelihood of another grant, right? We've always known that this was going to be, a, 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 at some point, a general fund impact. When we first started this program, there was no grants on the table. I mean, when we started this whole conversation, we knew that it was going to be an impact on the general fund. The intent was that we could find a grant, but at the time that we started this, it was, it was really by default the general fund. You guys did a great job going out and bringing um, proactively to the table an offset back in 17 that allowed us to sort of begin to offset this, right? So good for staff. I, I want to acknowledge that because, again, we would have had to make a hard decision. Do we take two million hit now, or we were able to avoid that? So there's some six million dollars that we get some some type of um, support for over over three years. 
But at some point, um, there would have been a more direct general fund conversation, uh, which brings me to the Greta, which again, it, it ran independently of us. Um, I, was, I had the privilege and the pleasure of being on the conference call with um, um, was it Representative Senator Beach early today, uh, me and Madam Chair, Mr. J. Mark, remember it was January of this year, we were bound to confidentiality, but they hadn't dropped their bill yet. Um, and we were on the call with Henry County, um, Cherokee County, um, Roddell was in the room, um, 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 Gwinnett was on the call, Cobb was on the call. It wasn't all the metro counties, but it was enough who could be on the call. And they pretty much was, for the most part, saying, hey, we got this coming. We just, you know, and basically, I was encouraged by it. Um, they recognized that a lot of things had to be done, but they were, they were basically giving the equivalent that Look, we've got a solution for you. We know there needs to be more regionalization, a little bit more consolidation. There's 117 bus systems throughout this entire state, 117 independent bus systems throughout this state, and we got to do better. Uh, and so, uh, but again, they didn't get into a lot of details. Of course, my conversation, my question is, okay, how are we going to fund this? Like, okay, how are we going to, are you going to give us money, or are we going to, you know, is there going to be some local empowerment? He said, very good question. We're working through that be patient with us. And so we didn't know that obviously this what they came down with the penny spots that allows us to do that to come. I'm, I'm putting this all in the context that, you know, life sometimes lines up perfectly, right? So it's like, okay, I've got three years, we've got a pilot program, um, there's an alignment with the Greta, right? By then we have true raw numbers, true actual numbers that we can go to the public if in fact we want to do a referendum, which is like, okay, so how much do we generate on a penny spots per month? Just yes, right at two million. Right, so I need to understand. So currently we've got two million dollars gets me roughly four routes for the sake of conversation. Fully loaded. All costs in. Two million against four routes. Right? We do a penny sloth. That's twelve times two is what? Twenty four million? That's twenty four million. Well, let's be honest, that's forty eight routes. That's urbanization. That's huge, right? We're not talking about vans. So there's a balancing act that says, okay, I don't think I will quite recommend a full penny, maybe half of that or something. But 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 part of that you, you got to put. And I draw comp comparables all the time so people can get, know what they're looking at. It says, okay, guys, you got Metro Atlanta, which is some big counties where they'll consume their penny spots pretty big. They're talking about trains and stuff. They're much much larger. We're talking about a bus system to move people around, maybe 10,000 people. That's a different conversation, so we've got to be smart about how we're funding. We can absorb $2 million. Uh, I agree there should there perhaps should be, now, again, Commissioner Lowell here is not here, but he knew I was going to have this conversation. He said, please speak. I said, I'm not putting any words in your mouth. This is not a collective, and so I, but this is important. He knew I was going to go here. Um, that we have options. The county is not broke. We know in three years, there's things on the commercial side that will begin to hit. Uh, we're doing proper growth, but it, it's, it's something that we recognize that the county needs from an economic development. They said it at the chamber meeting today, we recognize it, but, but we've got some smart people in this room, and it's not hard to get our minds around $2 million, and can we absorb it? It just changes priorities. But we recognize economic development is a priority, but this conversation about we don't know what the budget is, and I mean, yes, we've always known. We've always known it was about $2 million, give or take. Uh, not get into user fees. We're saying it's going to be $2 million regardless. Now, we get user fees, that helps offset the impact of the digest. But, but we recognize that. So I, I just want to bring this around. This is no action. I think uh, my closing comments on this one, both third-party operator and budget, two items at the same time, our consultant and our third-party operator will come up with the ultimate detailed budget. Is that correct? In other words, the number of people, Hourly rate, um, not, Miguel, please. That, that is true. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, so we know a top level number. It doesn't take, take long so to get our minds around it. Um, we were evaluated by the ARC, uh, recommended, they evaluated our routes, and they says, oh, this is only going to generate. I know we did an original proposal, and it says, well, we appreciate it, but not yet. Go back. And we had to expand enough to be warranted to a grant. You guys came back with a great plan, and so we went from there. But it's not like, we never knew what the numbers were. And I, I guess I want to get that of record that we know that this will be, for the record, we know this will be about, in our minds, right now about $2 million per year um, to operate this bus system. Um, inclusive of user fees. Yes? Yes. 
inclusive of user fees. But it will be refined by our third party operator once we bring them on board. Yes, sir. Is that an accurate statement? That is correct. Mark, I just want to codify that for the record. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. Jennifer, just one more value that you can add to this. Gonna, can I let you go? Sure. You want to add anything else? or? I think I'm good. All right, I'm going to keep going. All right, so it brings me, I made a comment earlier. I'm going to go back up here to routes. Um, you know, during the ARC meeting, um, and Gary, you want to be ready for your, mm -hmm. your presentation. Um, during the ARC meeting, um, there was a unanimous vote to sort of move to the next step. And, um, it, it was duly noted and recognized by um, uh, the broader ARC that, like, absolutely, it was a definitive resounding for those who weren't in the room that, yes, we're moving forward. Um, you know, you guys, we, we support you. That being said, um, uh, one of the comments that was made by, is John or the exec, no, Booker is the executive, what is John or? Head yeah, of transportation. Head of transportation made a comment uh, in statement, official record that the ARC is a recommend, recommending body um, and um, uh, on behalf of the FTA and while um, the county and the FTA will ultimately work out its route system in the future. Um, and they gave, for example, Route 100 just could easily, which was an original proposal, could easily change back from its current state. Um, and that statement was made, and, and, and my takeaway from that statement, and you guys who were there, tell me what you heard. Did you hear the same thing? That there's going to be tweaking and changes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I want to come back to fundamentally um, the different routes. And Gary, I'm going to give you a presentation once we resolve this. Um, there was an original route that was presented, um, which is Route 100 going across Calvinton Street. Um, there was a change that was done. Um, it's a, um, while legal, it was um, unbeknownst to the Board of Commissioners. Um, uh, I didn't know as Vice Chair, nor as the uh, uh, Transportation Chair, um, neither did um, Commissioner Volker, no, neither did the Home Rule District Commissioner, which is okay. The administration can move independent of the Board of Commissioners where you have the right to do so. It was not a legislative matter, it was an administrative matter. No problem. Um, I, I think just better communication sometimes always helps. It was just sort of what was not said versus what was said because it was acknowledged that the routes, uh, the two new routes were presented, right? So we were looking at one thing, but we just didn't see that one part. But okay, we had already presented um, a route. So uh, in theory, you, you, you only, you altered, you modified, one was modified, but the other two were added. Two added were important because that added additional cost, but duly noted as it relates to the other one. Um, that being said, since we have two proposals that were submitted to the ARC, one was the original one and one was the supplemental, um, now that the commissioners have had a chance to see with this, um, it, it is um, in our interest um, to sort of revert back that Route 100 to go direct. Um, there was nothing that was plausible to say why we needed to alter it to begin with that we see fit. Um, and so from that perspective, um, um, this is for both our, our, our consulting firm when they go out to the public, um, you know, which route do you present in the 100? Do you, the one that goes around, or the one that goes direct? Uh, we're going back to the original proposal, which was actually a good proposal. It was like, well, why'd you touch the cake? It was actually pretty good um, um, to revert back. Um, and so at the same point, um, when we get to the point of the FTA, we're also filing that, and of course, whatever amendments you guys need to do regarding TIP to support that, we expect you to do that. So that being said, I'd like to call a motion to ensure and establish that Route 100 will now go direct across Calvin Street as originally proposed. And that um, we give administrative concurrence like we did last time for you guys to file whatever TIP amendments you need to. And when you bring it before the full Board of Commissioners, next month meeting, you will adequately have on whatever support you need to uh, Chairman, b before we consider that, if I may, I, I think as part of the application process and the upcoming uh, FTA uh, application itself, the refinement or the alteration of the routes is going to be a matter of course. It's going to be uh, 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 informed by the input from uh, the third party operator and public output. So uh, there are going to be uh, there are plenty of opportunity to make those adjustments. So what I'm suggesting is that that uh, we 
don't necessarily have to commit to a particular route at this point, if unless we are um, absolutely certain that that's how we intend for it to play. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, we we got a motion on the floor. We're, we're pretty definitive about this, right? which is what the pleasure of the board, at least collectively, is that there needs they were never considered. Way in. So administratively, you guys put forth a, a change in plan that, as if the commissioner's voice didn't matter. That that just hear me. We didn't want to take that action. It's like duly noted, but it shouldn't have never changed to begin with. Therefore, we shouldn't be in this place of having to alter it. Duly noted that it will change, but it has to go back to the original route. And we will come to homes in a minute because that's somewhat another commissioner's topic. But this is important. It's that it should have changed. Right. And so we wouldn't be in this place, right? So we'd rather put it back what it was, put that to the public, to the consultants, let it wait in, do the public hearing. But that wasn't, there was no buy-in from the legislative side that that was the route to go. So there was no home rule given to the commissioner that the district is directly impacted. I got no consideration. So it was like, that's where we are right now. So we've got a motion, guys. On, I mean, do we know it? It will change. All we're saying is that, but we don't want to put two routes in front of the public. Put one and let that alter. Uh, I, I get, um, I'm just going to leave it at that. I, won't, I know there might have been some concerns mm -hmm. out of the city, um, you know, perhaps regarding the route. Which again, they, they've not put any funding into this. And again, they can take legislative action if they wanted to. They could close SR, you know, Calendar Street, all six axes, buses, and trucks to come across here. They can do that. But I think to 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 heed to heed the voice of the city in in light of the commissioners. Yeah, it, 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 there's a there's a there's an honor park here. That's like no. We're going to weigh in now. We get two bowling balls. We missed our first one, but you get a second one to roll. And we need this one to be honored. So I think duly noted, um, the discussion was appropriate. Mark, you, you, you're fine. Um, any discussion you want to have? No. All right. So we've got a motion to floor. Can I get a second, Mark? Second. All right. All in favor of the change as so stated, say aye. 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 No? Aye. No. Okay, so thank you. It passes three more. Do we know it? Do we know it? All right, next. Um, three one. Make sure you get the name. Um, I got it. Um, yeah, I, okay. That's okay. All right, so that being said, now let's keep moving. Um, H.E. Holmes. Right. Um, likewise, um, in acknowledging my peers, and I'm doing it on TV. I, I did speak with Commissioner Mulcair yesterday. I said, look, you know we're going to talk about Ralph tomorrow. I know you're not going to be in the room tomorrow, but I want to make sure I give proper voice to your, your concern and your objection of the extension of not necessarily the fourth route, we're just going to call it the fourth route per se, but the distance that is when it, trans it, it began to transverse counties. Right? Um, and specifically the distance from Riverside over to H.E. Holmes. And his argument was about the mileage and the cost to us. And it's just, gee, that's a mile. That's a long time. And I'm going to come to your conversation about Thompson. I, I acknowledge that and said, you know what, I get it. Uh, at the time, Greta had not been done. Um, but we had conversations with both um, Cobb County. He says, well, can we partner with Cobb? I mean, I mean I, uh, uh, right there where the sheriff's satellite office is, right there off of Thornton Road, which I think is um, Oak Ridge. You go right there to that stop sign, and the number 30 comes there, makes a left on six flag drives, and goes all the way down to Epicenter, makes a left and jumps on the highway. Why can't we disconnect right there at the 30? Why can't we wrap that, that, that AG Holmes route? And I could, you know, take it down by Maxim Road, swing around, up and around, go back up um, by Silver Creek, back up Lee Road, um, etc. So the, actually, the distance that it takes from Riverside to AG Holmes. You can wrap that back in accordingly, assuming we could connect to the number 30 and still uh, fulfill our regional commitment. Um, <coughs> it, it, was, it was a good conversation. Um, I wanted to acknowledge his concern, but we don't have a solution for it. 
Uh, and, and so, uh, Miguel, can you put the committee in for the record, are there any conversations that Greta is having? I know we had considerations about Lee Road that said, well, if we do this, can we get some credit on the old Greta? Um, is there some type of credit that, okay, we're going to take people from the 30 over to homes, could they get on our bus, or maybe we lock it out through technology? How do we get credit, or, you know, will they give us some type of reimbursement that says, okay, if we run this route, can they give us some offsetting um, revenue or something on that? Can you speak to that? Yes, yeah, so, uh, I'm not aware of uh, detailed discussions in terms of uh, any subsidies or, or the like. However, I do know that uh, they are looking at all of the different operators in the area and having conversations as to how um, transfers would occur between uh, one system and another. Uh, that one system, uh, the, the overall all goal is to have a, a seamless regional system so that the point of origin could be any one of the operators, uh, but the ultimate uh, destination could be by way of a transfer that would be uh, acknowledged and it would be recognized by the other operators uh, as a as a fee less transfer. So they are definitely looking at not just uh, the individual operators uh, and their funding within their operations, but more as a regional component. However, those discussions, to my knowledge, have not progressed to the point where we would know if there's any kind of consideration for subsidies. And so um, to, to that point, you know, no, the great intel, great insight, but no actual, nothing that we can align against right now. Correct. Okay. But it's duly noted that uh, perhaps um, um, it is duly noted. And so I just want to put a record for, on behalf of Commissioner Molecare, that I, I was willing to carry this for him, to say his objection was to that leg of that route. All right, Mark, you got that part? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and so we'll come back to that at a later point. So on that one, there's no action until Will you keep us posted on what? I, I certainly will, and, and I know there's going to be consideration for uh, and discussions for duplication of routes or adding or consolidating, perhaps sometimes complementary routes. So right. they are going to be looking at at the grid operation. They're going to be looking at uh, Cobb's operation, uh, the counties to the extent right. that we've developed uh, the counties operations and MARTA and others and so they're going to be looking at the routing from a more holistic standpoint Understood. and once that exercise is completed then uh, there could be potentially uh, sharing of certain routes and consolidation and and, I, and and so to your point I, I guess you know to Commissioner Mulcair's point you know what is the bus route that we currently have for Greta was it the 430 463 for Greta. 463. Um, we just said like, yeah, right, right. Maybe a 465 is that. Well, why can't we create another route that carries, according to the H E Homes, all the way out, stopping at from you know coming down transportation services, stop at Fairburn Road, stop at Lee Road, stop at um, Thornton Road, stop at Riverside, and keep on out. And so we have a couple of options that can be considered, right? Um, obviously, that 465 in my mind is a, a Holds route would be something that we can get credit for, like we did with the current 463. Maybe there's some type of facility that we need to be built. I mean, you're working through that, right? And so we're, I'm not trying to script what you'll be looking at, but I think um, I gave uh, Commission Low Care assurances that I'm open. Um, it's, it's, but it's like, well, if the state comes up with a solution, if Miguel is able to negotiate a solution, I mean, I think, okay. Uh, but we want to make sure that we're able to fulfill the spirit of to get our, to get our. Um, to ensure our citizens have continuity of commuting um, and they have options and they can connect, uh, interconnect with other systems and not be so isolated from the broader, to your point, the broader region. And as I said, um, it, we're not Pluto. We are part of, a, 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 we have other sister um, um, municipalities and counties that we want to make sure that we're aligned to. So, okay. Anything else on that one? Um, Gary, we've got some guests here. Do you want to talk about the routes any further, or would you like to bring them up now? Let's just bring our consultant up. Okay. Uh, we oh. have Michael Hightower and Amanda Clement from the collaborative firm who are doing our rebranding and our public outreach. Chairman, uh, 
members of the committee, let me say, uh, administrator. Uh, yesterday, uh, as you guys were, I think each one of you were there yesterday, and I think you were there as well yesterday when they made the presentation. I think today, obviously, uh, Amanda has additional copies for each one of you. Uh, one of the things, I guess, Mr. Chairman, we want to just kind of uh, kind of go over as number one to make sure that as we move toward the uh, input sessions over the next several days that we're looking forward to those as well. And I believe uh, Amanda can uh, can speak to some of those expectations. You want to kind of touch on that? Yeah. And finally, that we, uh, we we have a, some a summary report due to the to, due to uh, the county on July 6th. So, Amanda. Okay. And I'll go ahead and pass these around. So this is just a copy of the full <coughs> presentation that was provided at the Board of Commissioners meeting yesterday. Um, but just to kind of touch on where we're currently at in our process, so we um, just wrapped up the portion, um, you know, providing just outreach and information to the public about the current services that are currently being offered through the county. Uh, we did host 13 community kiosks at various locations and events um, to distribute some of the rack cards um, as well as some promotional items that were developed with the branding effort. Um, and we're moving now into that public input portion to receive public input on the proposed routes that the county has put forth. Um, we do have a series of four public open houses scheduled over the next couple of weeks. We have one for each district. Um, and we are going to host this in a true open house format um, so that the hours are evening hours, um, but it, it is bands over the course of a couple of hours to give the public an opportunity to come in at their leisure. Um, as they're getting off work, we want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity. So no type of formal presentation. Uh, we have activity boards that are going to be set up to kind of access different you know, functions of the proposed routes. We're going to be looking at the, the routes themselves. Um, with potential stops and getting input on how those work for the citizens and if there are additional you know opportunities there um, we're going to be asking as well for input on the proposed times uh, for these routes to be running um, asking if this works for the community or if there are other times that should be considered or explored um, and also fare structuring um, where we're going to be asking about various you know ways to structure fares and payment you know, whether they are looking for a, um, you know, purchase for a day or a single ride, purchase per week or month. Um, again, just looking for that input from them on what they would like to see in this transportation option. Um, and so, like I said, we're kicking that off. Our, our first public input meeting is going to be tomorrow. Um, and so we're looking forward to that effort um, and looking forward to being able to, you know, wrap up and provide you with the input that we've received. Okay, not to cut you off, but we'll do it as a segue, and you can, if you have more um, content to share. Um, so, whose district are you starting it with tomorrow? Where? Um, so, in the, the presentation, we do have, oh, and I regret that these pages are not condition. numbered. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's correct. Uh, but we do have a slide in here that provides you with the date and locations and times for each of these district commission meetings. Um, and so the first one tomorrow, June 20th, is your district, Commissioner Robinson at Deer Lake Park Recreation Center. And so, um, and I'm speaking broadly, not about me personally, but just um, your approach and Gary, um, the district commissioners are aware of these dates. Um, there are open houses, these, and so for the record, these are not town hall. hall That's correct. Time. That's correct. All mean, Gary? That's come, come as you please. Come as you please. So it's really for you guys are there to host the public as they come in and you're going to facilitate whatever conversation but it's not about a commissioner being there to facilitate um to that is correct to, that's correct you know it, 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 yes yes, yes. that's correct. That correct all right okay but okay so then i'm going to double back um let's assuredly if you haven't done so make sure our commissioners are aware that you're having these, this particular meeting because this right. one's important right. or um you've done a great job in my opinion as far as getting out there educating about the current um services but this one is as important to ensure that the public had each commission district, that this was part of you guys' contract, each commission district, it was a mandate, had to have at least one meeting uh, so that input can be gathered from the whole system. Did that agree? Yes, so that, that is correct. Miguel, was that yes, sir. the concerns? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, I just want to assure, so 
right. Um, how long will this meeting last? I mean, I mean, again, it's come as you go. So what, six to what? Um, so it, it depends on the the you know the district and where we are. Yes. Um, but they typically range for two hours. Yes. Um, so the one tomorrow is going to be from six to eight p.m. Yep. Um, and all of them are fitting within about a two-hour time frame. Okay, that's fine. Um, and again, you may have something proposed, but I, um, I'm going to use the example yesterday in our work session yesterday. You know, I've been there. One of our my, my colleagues, um, um, you know, Ann Jones got her out of the fourth district. Uh, might have had a different place in which she wanted to have. So though, while you may have something that was proposed in book, Gary, you know how we do. We, you know, she had a, a, a preference for. At least she expressed. What was it? Villa Rica? Mira Lake? Mira, Mira, Mira Lake. Lake. Yeah, and Danielle is working with that. Okay, so I just want to acknowledge it for the record that. And Danielle is working with that. Uh, Do we know that um, um, the commissioners tend to know their district and where they can get the greatest density, per se? I, I, I recognize that you guys <coughs> do what you do based on convenience and what needs to get done, so we appreciate flexibility. You may have to do a couple of them. That's true. Okay. All right. All right so, um, recognizing it now, there was something that's, uh, this is open and Mark will allow you to take this offline and, and work with collaborative, but the fulfillment of your deliverables will probably go, what, toward the end of July? Fulfillment, uh, no, we, uh, I think what we August? mentioned yesterday was having, I mean, fulfillment deliverables will be done in July, I think we had mentioned yesterday to the board a July 6th summary report. Okay, summary report, Mark. And that's what we mentioned yesterday for the board, a July 6th recap of all the stuff. So everything, including these commission meetings, it'll be done by July. When is our first meeting? I want to make sure that you know we have to bring it back to the board. We got to okay. do the presentation. First meeting in July <coughs> is the night. Okay, That's so the work session. Okay. Night and ten. So that will be done there Friday. So are you are you free to come back and have a yes, close out? Yes, sir. Um, now part of your communication plan was not just to engage with the, with, it, it was to set our expectations on continued, and I think I read that in your communication plan that there's a, a if I lay out over the next you know, next two or three months, how do we, do you have recommendations in there as far as timelines and what needs to do, be done to communicate with the public as we go forward? We have some milestones that are coming up, uh, whether it's an FTA application, whether it's public hearings, is that going to be in your closeout document? Uh, you, th there will be some recommendations on next steps that include some FTA requirements. I think there, there are two public hearings required, I think, in the next stage. Uh, we'll also recommend how we, uh, how we how we bring into the fold the meetings that are, that Amanda and they, they had mentioned, how we use that input to go to the next stage as well. So, yeah, that'll be uh, like a next steps recommendation in that July 6th document. So, here's the thing you all about on you and Gary and, and who this person is. Ultimately, a dedicated full-time project manager needs to be in place. And assuming all things are school, who is responsible? You know, I grew up as a project manager, so I, I you know full schedule, how we lay this out, key milestones, and so forth. Do we think we can? I don't see you two doing this at all, being able to do it the way it needs to be done. But recognize the third-party operator. But are we trusting them to run the schedule, or are we going to have somebody in between you two no, that's going to be overseeing? Well, this? we're. There's several different moving parts to that. One, we're, we're going to need a transit manager to, to be our overseer of the day-to-day -day bus operations and to be the liaison with that third-party operator. Now, relating back to the work that the collaborative firm has done, they, they've given us a, a great plan uh, to move forward, forward with. Uh, one key thing to realize is that uh, marketing of our services uh, it's not going to be a, a three-month process like they, they've been on it's going to have to be continual uh, and to do that properly uh, we're going to need more resources material resources and, and human resources and that's a conversation we'll have to have with the board moving forward I, um, we do need to know, you know how you educate how we do that Mark you know that's something I'm gonna say I'm not gonna put it on your retreat. I'm not gonna put it on your meeting. But can you, I think with Rick, with him, with Gary, can y'all work out something? I mean, what's really, really needed? Um, we don't want to have redundancy.
redundancy of resources, but the need is necessary. <coughs> but how do we, um, I think, overseeing it is, is important from an operational, but it doesn't mean it's, it's like blocking, tackling, but it doesn't mean it's a required core competency for a person who's running a system to, to, to do marketing. Um, maybe that's a shared services that can be cut across uh, an organization. So I wouldn't say multiple resources, like once dedicated to marketing and transportation to do this, I don't think I could support that today. Uh, we're not big enough for that. I know it'd be convenient, but I'm willing to consider how do we share resources, Mark. You see what I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. Miguel? Yes, sir. Okay, so I do we know that we want to acknowledge that, yes, we need dedicated, yes, Gary, we, we haven't done it. We, we already know that, the study proved that out. I'm not, I'm just, I've got to be sensitive that we can't scale this so big, guys, that we, you know, I, I can't go beyond two million. We've got three million dollars in work with, you know, three million worth of people. That, that won't get there, because it, it can burgeon on us. So, do we know it? Just something to think about. Um, okay. we got time, no commitment, but we will get that. But, um, Mr. Hightower, Michael, you, in your plan, though, to, to Gary, can you make sure that that's refined, though? At least maybe through the end of the year, Gary, can y'all work together sure. and come up with a schedule with some key things? Just, I mean, I don't care if it's people, resources. I mean, we got to lay that out. Maybe your, your guy that we will, um, uh, i got to wait till Bill comes back, and you've got to answer questions about the third-party operator. Uh, I, I do want to acknowledge that the third-party operator, assuming that the Board of Commissioner approves um, this whole thing at our July, our second July meeting, uh, the third party operator will be on that schedule. In other words, it's down the list. If it passes, we'll consider it. If not, we table it. I mean, I see it going that simple. Gary, is, yes, that, sir. Sure. is that a fair? That's fair. All yeah. right, so at that point, so I'll leave it at that. You got it. Can you take it from there? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anything else y'all want to talk about? No, sir. We're clear. You got what you got? We're clear. So I've got a town hall meeting tomorrow, so you know what route you're proposing, and uh, for the four routes, y'all are clear and everything. Yeah, Danielle's going to be covering that. Uh, All right, Mark, can I release? Gary, can I release them? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you. All. all right. Thanks for having us. All right. Miguel, what else we got? I think it would be appropriate to uh, to look at the routes uh, briefly. I think that's yes, sir. the last item on the agenda related to bus uh, route service. Here, so Gary, if you could uh, go over those. Well, if I can get this Mondo board to work in again, Mark, you may do you may it in your mail. We're going to try it. Uh, 
on the agenda uh, conditionally pending the outcome of, of this meeting to award the contract to uh, C.W. Matthews and, and, the, and the cost is a little under 2.4 million for the 12.6 miles for the 2018 spa. So we would we would need essentially a recommendation uh, going forward um, for tonight. I have the exact number to put the exact amount. Exact amount. Uh, sorry, I can give it. I'm just, is it not to see? Because I mean, yes, we may have. It is. It's actually a, a, a bid amount. The uh, unit price. Based on the unit price. It's unit price. So it's based on the unit prices. That's all the pages. Okay. I don't have. I'll do. I'll do right now. Yeah. That's what I'm but it's not to exceed a certain amount, right? Correct. Which is what two point. It's uh, two million three hundred and uh, nine seven. Yeah, two point four. So it's less than two point four. All right. All right. I'd like to make a motion to um, make a recommendation um, to the full board of commissioners to accept the um, the bid award to CW Mac is not to exceed two point four million dollars. Taking out of the spot. Second. All in favor. Uh, uh, that I passes unanimously. Uh -huh. Very good. Keep going. Okay. Uh, the next item is really an information. <coughs> uh, there, there is a uh, a uh, need on an annual basis to. Uh, I'm sorry. I said annual basis. It's actually, every three years or so, uh, to have. Um, to make application to renew the radar permit for the county. Mm -hmm. And typically because of the federal requirements, uh, the work is done, the technical work is required to be done by the engineering uh, department of, of the county, in this case transportation. Yeah. And so we take a look at uh, uh, the, the routes and uh, the existing ordinance. Now this is going to be because it is embedded in the county code, it is going to be an ordinance amendment. And so at this point, it is for informational purposes. Uh, upon our review, we found that there are quite a number of roads uh, that are not currently in the, on the radar permit that should be, and uh, should be being a, a judgment, not just from the engineering side, but also from the sheriff's uh, traffic uh, operations folks. And so this has been an effort between the Sheriff's Department and uh, transportation to refine uh, the ordinance. The list of roads that I have provided to you are additional roads to what is included currently in the ordinance. There's going to be also a lot of uh, <coughs> amendments to uh, the lengths of uh, roads uh, to the existing roads. So there's going to be a much more comprehensive uh, list of roads that essentially will uh, <coughs> develop a table that includes all of the uh, proposed additional routes yep. and uh, the revisions to the existing routes and then we will present that as a, as a revision to the ordinance where the existing list is removed and the new comprehensive revised list uh, adopted uh, or inserted in its place. Okay. Uh, this is just for information at this point. Uh, the, the permit is due to expire at the end of this year, so the application process will have to be uh, moved along fairly quickly. I would anticipate if all goes well, perhaps towards the end of July, if not early August, we would be before the board with the proposed change. Okay. This is abroad. Can you make sure that when it comes before us, that we do a retreat? Right? Something you guys want to talk about then, the board commissioners, and we'll all be together, or that first meeting, that first set of meetings in August. Um, can you ensure that we have the district listing, or I didn't see it. It's not. It's, it's not, not on here. Can we distinguish by district? We can. Just to give us a little bit more focused um, input. We can do that. Yeah. Well, I, I know the requirement is requirement, but it helps us in, in, in how we translate the process. Yes, mm -hmm. but do we know that it's information only? Um, now I, I will. Uh, <clears throat> I will have a, a list composed that has the districts. Now, 
the one that ultimately uh, gets circulated for approval doesn't can't have the districts because uh, unfortunately it is it is handled by uh, the, the Georgia DOT in conjunction with uh, the, the state public. Okay. Safety agency. So, but, but nonetheless, for, for purposes of our internal proceedings, yeah. I can have one. Follow their rules, rules, but make sure we, you know, follow their requirements. Obviously, adhere to their regulations, but help us understand what they can. Well, all right. Anything else? Okay. Nope. Anything okay. else? Are we anything else on that? No, no, none on this. All right. Let's keep going. That's just normal activity with the G dot. It's this similar to the L. Okay, and I see that uh, that the routes are up now, so let's take advantage of Gary well, while working. the Mundo pad yeah. is uh, <coughs> cooperating. Okay, well, first thing I want to touch on, there's big issue seems to be the, the downtown notice route uh, and around uh, Campbellton Street and highway, the Highway 92 uh, rail intersection. And a couple of things uh, I want to say about that is in the original submission, the route left the transportation center, went up Fairburn Road to uh, Church Street, and then Church Street made a left on Campbellton Street, came down by Douglas County High School, turned on the Southern Drive to serve the uh, health center and, and the library. Well, we changed that to where we did not come down any of Campbell's, Campbellton Street. And the reason that we made that change is because uh, I got a direct request from Madam Chair to do that. Who, she had had conversations with the mayor um, who had reservations about us going down Campbellton Street. And so at the request of Madam Chair, we made that change. The change that we made we leave the transportation center, come to Fairburn Road to Church Street again. Uh, but instead, instead of turning left on Campbellton Street, we all go on down Church Street, uh, past City Hall, uh, past the the old uh, police precinct, and go down to Club Drive, make a left on Club Drive, uh, go down to Selman, turn right, and serve the library and health center, and then we hit. A very short uh, stretch of uh, Rose Avenue, come up by Hudson's and go across the railroad tracks uh, like that. In, in all our scenarios, we had really tried to avoid uh, the Highway 92 intersection at the railroad tracks. All of y'all know what traffic is like at that intersection, especially during peak times. And we just envisioned that for the buses uh, trying to get through that intersection at those times, it was going to cause a delay and throw the schedule totally off. So from the very beginning, we tried to avoid that, that intersection. And the one that we've mainly used uh, is there at Strickland, Strickland Street uh, for, uh, in Roseanne, where Hudson's is. That seemed to be our, our best location for at least to begin with and as and as as I said all along we just got to have a starting point somewhere and we felt like these were our best starting points and as we bring on our third party provider they give us input and we actually start running these routes there's going to be changes we, we, just, we know that uh, but th we felt like this was our best opportunity uh, to start with it uh, the other big issue seems to be the, uh, the express route uh, that stops uh, in Cobb County and then goes on into to, to AG Homes. Uh, again, that's our starting point. We've had some uh, very brief discussions with Cobb County. We feel like there may be an opportunity there to, to work with them uh, for some connections. And it's at some point, uh, it may be that instead of us going all the way into HE Homes, we just we use that as a transfer point uh, for Cobb. But again, we've got to have a starting point. We feel like that was our best starting point. Mm -hmm. So that, 
those, those seem to be the main areas of contention, and, and that's our explanation for what we did. Duly noted. Thank you, Karen. Yep. Yep. Um, and, and duly noted, it, it, it staff and Gary, um, both paths on uh, this Route 100, they actually work. They do. I, I, and I, I believe that the public will ultimately settle uh, which way you ultimately go. And it, it, you know, very likely, you've heard Commissioner Lynch say, it's very likely to revert back. Right? I think it's just letting the process work itself versus a political change, letting it be a legislative change in the body that should have been done, right? So we're saying the influence should have been greater here. Uh, it's not you. We're good. Thank you. Thank you. It's good. All right. Um, Mark, Miguel, can we keep going? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Let's keep going. Okay. Uh, the, uh, Next to last item, but the last item on the agenda is uh, sort of a revisit of the Highway 5 northbound right turn lane at Douglas Boulevard. Uh, you might recall a couple meetings ago, and I brought that before the committee in terms of the, the general discussion about whether that project was something that the county wanted to entertain as entirely funded by uh, with county funds whether they be SPOS funds or how we approve that uh, other funds well no all we did we're, it's it is it's not it, to be to, not to be what we approved was the right away for the southbound left turn lanes to be included in this project which right. is the northbound right turn lane okay all okay. right but uh, the discussion was about the, uh, the, the right of way and the project cost that would be entailed by, uh, by the construction of the, of the right turn lane okay. in the northbound direction. One of the things that has changed from the initial, initial assessment is there has been some upgrades to that, that shopping center there, that particularly the construction of two very s large signs, one of which would be in right. all likelihood in the right, right in the right of way that we would need for that uh, for that currently. So then the question became: uh, Is this still something that uh, that we want to undertake with all local funding, or do we consider this for uh, federal funding or through state DOT? One of the things that will happen as, as part of that last discussion was, um, and it was your question, Commissioner, uh, what are we talking about in terms of uh, cost? Right. And so, uh, again, the, the cost related to, to the overall project have several components, one of which is the right-of-way. Uh, I'm not at liberty to discuss the details of that uh, in this forum, uh, but uh, the Based on, on my research, the, the overall cost appears to be <coughs> in the neighborhood of uh, three quarters of a billion dollars for, for that project. Seven hundred fifty million. Without building it all, including just for the right of way for that little portion by the sign, or for the whole entire project for the whole for the whole entire project. So, what component of this, which is the right of way, does inconvenience cost us? Well, that's what I cannot discuss in this one. I, 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 I but you, you got an answer for us. Yes, I did. So this is just you're just breaching it, broaching the subject with us to put it up record. Um, and and it, it, essentially, what what I need from you uh, is, all right, with that uh, exposure, yes, at, at that level of funding, yep. uh, do we want to continue to pursue it as a strictly local project, or is that something that we need to uh, to engage uh, for federal funds? And the threshold question. Uh, that needs to be answered is the processes for right of way acquisition are very different from all local funding versus federal. And so at, at this juncture, so as not to uh, taint perhaps the uh, federal uh, or, or make a commitment to the federal process, um, I'm asking the question: What is what is the pleasure uh, or the sense of the committee? Seven hundred and fifty thousand. Again, that's my best guesstimate at this time. We, we won't have a hard number until we actually do the design and bid it out and get a hard uh, contract price. 
And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, what you're saying is if we go, if we contact the property owner yeah. and to purchase the right away, then we've already violated the requirements. That yeah, come you with the federal funds. Federal. Correct. We would not be eligible for federal funds if we brought it. My initial response is, is, is two things. It's like, okay, that's it. it it's, but it's on the list. Mm -hmm. and, and it's time to, to move. It's time to move. So it's, it's now. So this is an actual item. Um, how fast? And I, I'd like to get input from the pool. Uh, I, I need to have Commissioner Mulk here, here on this one. Uh, this is not his district, though, is it? Or does it touch it? It's that's right uh, at the ends. Commissioner Dyer? It's either ends or cleaners. It's close. I have to check the map. Highway 5, Douglas has got to be Dyer. I think it's got to be Dyer. It's got to be Dyer. And the reason, okay, so two things. S, that's um, Highway 5, that's. Yep, yeah, it's District 4. Right, that's a state route. Correct. Douglas Boulevard is in the city, but is that on the list of projects that we assume responsibility for or maintenance? Uh, there are Six two four. groups. It's not the group that we assume ownership of, it's the ones we assumed I have to go back to SDS and read the exact requirements, but it's not like Chapel Hill or Chicago Avenue. Which we actually are responsible for. Riverside. own those now. So I think pretty sure it's the other group which we're Can responsible for maintaining them, yes. but not, we don't own them. I'd have to go back and get the exact verbiage. But they expect us to manage this, so we've got to take some type of participation. So I'd, I'd like to get his input. He'll, as a matter of fact, he'll be here tonight. Uh, he's just missing this meeting, so let's just say uh, I'll talk to him offline and we'll send you our response. Can we do it that way? Sure. Keep you on track just because of the time we come back for our next committee meeting and be. we do it that way? Sure. Mark, we in agreement? Mm -hmm. Gary, would you object to that? No. Okay. Right. We'll do it that way. All right. Okay, well that that, uh, that wraps up the uh, the agenda uh, as originally proposed. There is one, uh, well, I'll turn it over to you, but I do have an item under committee member topics. Okay, remind me what that committee member topic was. Well, I didn't tell you yet, so uh, that's I'm turning it over to you to manage the agenda. Okay. Well, if you have anything else, if not, we'll go to that. Let's go to that. Okay, fair enough. All right. So, the uh, there was some discussion at the at the board uh, agenda meeting yesterday. I'm sorry. Yes, there, that that was a component of a of an item that was brought up as it relates to the Anawake Road yes. and State Route 92 yes. intersection and what the scope of services was intended for that. Yes. And, and I do remember uh, some of the things you said. Uh, we are going to have to uh, develop a, a detailed scope of service to then be able to move the project forward. And if, if you could uh, go back over what the intent was of that. Sure. And then I will offer some comments. Yeah, and that's fine. And um, again, it was brought up by Rich Rilling, a, a SPAS project manager. Um, and what, what, what triggered my response was <coughs> suggestions, we don't know what this is, so we just gonna go to the next project. And, and that was my like, no, money just got disappeared like that. Um, I, it, it, I didn't like the way that process went. He didn't mean it that way, but that's, that's the way it came out. Yeah, and it was That's saying, not uh, what we talked about. Yeah, and, and it was just how I was like, well, wait a minute, well, me. well, how are you gonna just skip that? Like, it was, it wouldn't have been on the list because we went through the list mm -hmm. and we went to New York, so it, was like, it, it couldn't just be dismissed like that. Okay, but that's that. We're all good, guys. No problem. Uh, uh, all right, so backing up, and this is historical. Uh, remember, um, it used to be Lower River Road, right, which is where, where before Riverside was actually cut to the end of, 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 of Beverly Road. Um, that's where the elementary school is, that's where the cemetery is, that's where the church is. And because of the volume, because when tributary came online, and all the other things that came along there, they're like, we can't send trucks and everything up through there. So they cut Riverside all the way down, right? Over time though, what they realized is that the traffic coming off of 166 going north, and the traffic coming from basically the public's coming south, was converging right there, the Anawake and at 160 light. 
and making left turns. Um, it was just, it was a bad design. It's like, well, we know we could never take the traffic back up through the cemetery and all of that, but was there a more better design that we should, the comment was we should have had lined Riverside with Anna Wake. So it's an afterthought. We probably should have aligned it with that light. Now the question becomes, so in dealing with all the feedback I got over the past few years about, can y'all put a the light right there? Can y'all put a the light right there? We can't make a left turn. It's too dangerous. There's been so many accidents almost happened there because people are flying down both directions with momentum to the bottom of that hill right there at that turn. Uh, and so the question is, how do we resolve that? It was just put on the list of things we know that it's an issue, um, it's an exposure. Um, and so it was put on the list for consideration, how do we fix it? Uh, I think we wanted to know, did it make sense to realign um, Riverside with Anna Waking? And that did require some type of scoping. We knew that at least at a minimum we wanted to know what the answer is. How easy, how hard was it? So that's all this was supposed to be. Okay. So it, so it is a, a uh, scoping analysis of potentially a realignment of those two roads, or a realignment of one. To meet the other. Right. Uh, whatever that may be. And, 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 and the, the theory was we had these standby engineering firms. We had a package of 10. And the, the thought was, can we get somebody just to take, go take a look at that? I mean, we don't even know what we're looking at. So to, 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 to Rich's point, we didn't know because we didn't even have a preliminary. And that was the whole point of having these standby you know, engineering firms. And to be able to go look at something and give us some type of preliminary, some scope of you know, order of magnitude. So that's now, think. Based on discussions with Randy, and that was a couple of years ago, I mean, like, it is possible to put a live Riverside Parkway, but with that being a state route, it has to meet all the MUTCD requirements, and at the time, as of the last time we studied it, it did not meet the MUTCD requirements. So, then we could put it, so yeah, it so is yeah. possible to put a light there, we just have to make sure that it meets the MUTCD. But then the question is, should we do it? Because again, you've got three lights that were so tight, I mean, Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about lights barely aligned now, they're what, quarter mile apart or whatever the case may be. So it was just, are we compounding it by putting a third light right there? And then you guys will solve that. I think this is an engineering problem, not a political problem. It, it is, and frankly, when, when we were trying to uh, define the scope or figure out what the scope might have been, yep. uh, I think we kind of defaulted to, you know, it, it looks as if it realignment of of one of these roads is is about the next thing you would do to, right. to this intersection uh, because operationally it, it functions within the parameters. So you would cut a road, cut Riverside around that community. You'd be cutting a, you know, this is Fairburn, this is Riverside. You'd be cutting over here to the light and mm -hmm. you're cutting through a hill, whatever that is right there. Trees, you just cut it through. You're cutting, recutting a road right. to better align. So it's an alignment issue uh, to avoid um, uh, public safety issues, you know, exposure, just people. Look at it. Okay. That's all it was supposed well, to do was to assess. We we're going to use some okay. dollars. So, so, uh, okay, because it could it could potentially be a, a substantial project. It would be a cost yeah, project. Be a big one. So right. we will do we will do the initial uh, scoping. Yep. And uh, we'll get the answer to okay, what are the alternatives and what are the costs, and then we'll bring that back and make yeah, decisions based on that. But, but look at the bigger picture and come back like okay, we can't afford that. I mean, it is light. So um, again, it's an engineering solution, not a. Just looking at it on the map, it would have to start turning somewhere around Hope Road, Hope Road now, way to get the Riverside to line up on Riverside. Oh wow! So you cut it like yeah, yeah. So it'd be way back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you got any that, closer, that you got any closer, you'd end up you'd be turning right and being parallel to Fairland Road. Work on that. So yeah, it's yeah, a, it's a good point. That, that's why it's an issue, but it, sometimes it, it may not be practical for us to pursue that. <coughs> Can you find out for us, and it may sure. be easier by a light or something that um, um, uh, I don't know. When the lights, so if they know you're sitting there, it'll turn. I don't know. Right. Okay. All right. Well, then uh, that's all I have. Gary, anything else you want to add? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Good. Um, with that being said, I won't belabor it. We ran a little bit longer than I anticipated, but thank you all for your input. Let this meeting stand adjourned. Thank you all.